it's me all right this is a review for the bounty um i have really bad allergies so i promise my eyes are not normally this bloodshot uh, bloodshot and stuff like that but i'm just fighting with allergies um the bounty i like loved this episode because there was just so much good stuff in the bounty um Vatic's opening monologue was just delightful. This woman, whoever this actress is, is just chewing the shit out of this this show. Like, I feel like I've seen her somewhere before. I, I just don't know what she's in. Every time I watch this, I'm like, I should go look up this lady. Because I could swear to her face is very familiar, you know what I mean? Um, but I, she's just chewing the shit out of the monologue. Um, <sighs> okay, so the disease, the aromatic disease. Um... I, when Jack discovered what he had, I was like, dude, relax. Picard lived to like 80 something. Like it's, de it's not a death sentence. It's just like, shit's going to be weird for a while. Um, but I, and you know, it's funny. I listened to a podcast where they kind of review this. I don't feel like, it, like Irmotic never, you know, gave Picard super duper fighting skills or like made him see crazy shit like that. So I don't really think your emotic is, um, I really don't think that your emotic is like the cause of like all his problems and stuff, but that's just me. Um, but that's different problem for a different time. Uh, the entire, uh, Jack and Picard interactions were nice. It was, it, it, it does feel like they're earning building the relationship and I enjoy that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like automatically like they're cool like, they do have quite a few scenes where they, like, talk to each other and get to know each other and stuff like that. And I, I, I kind of dig that. Um, so that was nice. Um, Worf showing up and everybody's reaction to him. And then, you know, all of his, uh, you know, it's been 18 months and blah, 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 and whatever is funny. And then he's like, you know, aside from the occasional thing of sour mead. And he's like, sour mead. And then, like, Riker, always with the jab, he's like, you know, Chateau Picard. And he's like, it is quite tart, sir. <laughs> I feel like everybody clowns on Chateau Picard. Like, maybe he needs to change up the recipe or something because not everybody likes it. Um, I, I did enjoy that Worf being Zen was really messing up Riker in this. Like, I thought it was hysterical how Riker was like, what is happening Right now, every time Worf would say some some Zen shit, and he was like, "We're all gonna die," or like, "What is what is the world?" I don't even understand. Um, love that. What I realized that I missed was roundtable discussions. Like, you know, when they they basically all get in a room and they like strategize in the room together. We haven't done a lot of that, and like Picard, you know what I mean? And like, I realized that was one of the foundational things of like the original, you know, next gen that they did a lot. They all got around a table and they, they talked through it and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not someone who loves like politically based stuff, but I do like group brainstorming. And I realized that that was like a facet of it that we don't really get a lot of in new stuff. It's usually like, this is what the captain says. And that's it. And if someone says something, it's just like one or two people, but it's not like everybody sitting around a table and talking um, through it is interesting. Um, I thought it was cool how, like, you know, they dropped them off at Daystrom, and then all of a sudden, we're like, whoop, gotta go! And they're like, where the fuck are we gonna go? Like, there's no place for us to, like, the jumping away, I thought was a nice little um, bit of drama to add into the equation. Let's fucking talk about, this episode was just so good. Let's fucking talk about Daystrom Institute, station, whatever. Um, what, like, I, you know, I know that you go to, like, the, um the various facilities and stuff like that, I would love for, like, them to have a mock Daystrom Station Museum to visit, to be like, what kind of crazy shit do they have? You know, we're seeing Kirk's body. We're seeing the attack triple, the wharf attack triple thing, hysterically. Um, I loved that part, because I forgot about how much, you know, the Klingons fucking hate <laughs> tribbles. Um... Genesis, uh, oh my god, seeing the crow and then seeing Moriarty, I got so like, oh my god, they even brought back the same actor, Giles from fucking The Nanny, and stuff like that, I loved it, and then, you know, we're talking about Section 31, 
such an excellent, like, I just want to wander around section, uh, uh, like, the Daystrom station and be like, well, what other kind of cool shit do they have? Um, thought it was really cool. Um, Riker hearing the notes and then knowing what they are was, like, getting delightful. If it hadn't, like, turned into an actual song, I would have been like, all right, fucking stop calling out, you know, C sharp, B flat. Like, just fucking tell me. Um... And then being able to hear Pop Goes the Weasel, like, that was... Oh, I had, like, um, the moment where, like, you know, you're seeing Riker when they very first meet. It was just, oh, so a nice little... I, again, it was, like, not even a year ago to me, but it was still, like, oh, that was, it was nice. Um, Jordy! Jordy's showing up! Jordy! Um, first of all, okay, it, oh, it will never not be weird to me to not see Jordy with his little visor jobby. I appreciate that, like, we did something to fix his eyes and stuff, but, like, it's never not gonna be weird to me him not wearing that stuff. Um, also, Jordy being, like, stupid, um, aggressive, also a weird thing as well, because Jordy is normally, like, very affable. So watching him being, like, confrontational from the get was fantastic. Um... Jordy's probably like my favorite character in this in this episode. Jordy for like the win. Um every every episode I feel like has an MVP and Jordy was like the MVP in this one. Um let's see, what did I have here? Uh Jordy, you know, being like, you know, I I had that moment where I was debating if I was going to, you know, give you a curt handshake or if I was going to give you a hug and then opens his arms like fucking ugh, love Jordy so much. Um we're going to go back to Jordy in a minute. It, I appreciate that Picard, maybe it was, I don't feel like Picard was as much of a flirt as Jack is. Like, I'm trying to figure out, is there like sexual tension between Jack and Sydney or Jack and Seven or like, what is going on with Jack? Jack is like big pimping with all the ladies. Like, he's just very flirty. Um, and again, uh, let's see, George... Jordy or Jordy being aggro dad. Yeah. Again, Jordy being the protective dad and all of this is just fucking I want to talk more about that in a little bit too. It's just been amazing. Um, let's talk about showing up to the museum. Ship fucking porn. I immediately the moment I saw it, I was like, This is your favorite part of the episode <laughs> Because I know that you were like this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. Like, oh, beautifully done. Like the entire museum and stuff like that. I was like, this is they did the ship porn for all of the fans. Um that beautiful scene where they have like the call out where Jack, you know, talks about all the ones that he likes. And then um it's weird because the New Jersey, I don't I feel like I don't remember the New Jersey as much, but like, I know the New Jersey was important. I just don't remember from what, um, and then watching seven talk about like Voyager, the affection she has for Voyager is just lovely. Um, that was really nice. I, I enjoyed that. I'm just into, I, I liked how they did the whole museum. And so again, another fucking place. I wish we could just hang out and walk around and be like, Ooh, what's this one? What's this one? What's this one? Um, so anyway, um, Back to the Daystrom Institute, when um, Riker figures out that this has got to be data with all of this because it's between the crow and Moriarty and Pop Goes the Weasel and Marvelous and stuff like that, like finding data and then finding aged data. Um, I love that they decided to do so like I know that we're supposed to be like data died twice. I like that Raffi called it out like, did he die twice? And they're like, yeah, yeah, he did. Um, and then being like, you know, this is the culmination. I, I like that that um, the last song was like, we're making this a culmination of everything. And isn't that like what old age is, uh, Alexa Stapp? Um, Age is a culmination of all of our experiences, all of, you know, that kind of thing. I kind of love that we did that with the wisdom of age. Um, love that. I thought that was nicely done. And I'm like, I'm, I'm willing to forgive it. Um, so I really thought that that was cool. Let me go on to the next one. I, 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 again, sequentially. I wrote Jordy on here so many times. Um, I like the Jordy and Sydney dynamic. Um, it's weird. Like, 
you know, you imagine that Jordy, I, you know, it's fucking LeVar Burton. This is like America's dad during Reading Rainbow time. You imagine he's a good dad. You know what I mean? Like, so why is Sydney so confrontational to him and stuff like that? And you realize it's more like his protectiveness and her defiance that has made the weirdness in their relationship. Not necessarily he's been shitty. It's just that he's been overprotective because he's seen some shit. And he doesn't want Sydney to have to go through that. And that's um, that's kind of awesome. I I just love, like, Jordy's entire, um, I like Jory, Jordy, who, you know, we thought would be the least reticent. Like, you know, in the, I like how we're spinning things. Like, Worf is usually, like, the first one to, like, jump into battle. And now he's, like, pacifist. And then Jordy's like, um, sure, boss, whatever. And he's fighting back against that because now he's got a family to protect. He's got the daughters and the wife and stuff like that. And, like, I like this. I like that we're turning it on our heads and that, you know, things change over time. Our priorities change and stuff. So I I, I did like that this was interesting. Um, Shaw. <laughs> Shaw's so great. I really... Shaw is probably my new favorite character in, like, these shows because of how much he's just all over the place. So Shaw, who is like this complex, arrogant prick, becomes such a fangirl when he's just standing in front of Jordy. You know what I mean? Like, I, and like, you know, you watch like Picard and Seven be like, what the fuck is happening right now? And then Jordy being like, you know, I would love to geek out with you, but we got shit to do. And like the giggle that comes out of Shaw is fucking fantastic. It's just, it's all great. Like, I, I just enjoyed that so much. Um... Oh, I wrote frustrated dads. Yeah, you notice how, like, oh, Jordy angry. I Also, more things. Like, Jordy is just so great in this episode because, like, he he's angry. And he's like, did you steal my thing? And, he, and like, all of a sudden they have a frustrated dad moment. And then they're like, Jack and Sydney. With, like, once they realize they stole the bird of prey stuff. I thought that was cool. Um, Jordy walking into the room and being like, you, get away from my daughter. Like, love it. Love it so much. Um... So then back to um, where we are with Data. Riker is like, you all are leaving here with Data. I don't give a fuck what happens. Um, take him. And then still badass. Like, still walking out. Like, old as fuck. And still walking out and shooting people up with the freaking phaser guns or whatever. Like, amazing. Big, big love. Um, and then Jordy seeing Worf. With the kindness. And then seeing Data with the kindness. So then what I also loved here is that War, who has been beating us over the head with his pacifism, then goes, looks at Picard, and he's like, I will get William Riker back. Fearful be the god or man or beast who gets in my way. And I was like, ah, there you are. Like, that's... Now I get why you did it. Because, like, you want to go ahead and show that our lovely... um our lovely Worf is pacifist until you mess with his peoples. And then he ain't no pacifist at all. Um, loved that. I thought that was beautifully done. Um, what else do I have? Oh, my God. The other one that's wonderful in this is Brett Spiner. So Brett Spiner, I... Um, he just acted his... Uh, again, I think he really enjoys this. He's like, oh, let me go ahead and be multiple things. Like... Acting his ass up and toggling, like, the way that his acting was, like, toggling between each of the characters and then, like, how he was able to, you know, start quietly and abruptly with Data and then all of a sudden snark, like, lore. Like, I, and like, Brent, mm, Spider killing it in this. It's just doing so good at this. Um, when you finally find out the body of Jean-Luc Picard... Like, you know, I, I love when we do stuff like that. When we go ahead and show up. Um, it's like, hey, I'm telling you. I'm actually telling you right now. You just need to listen. You're not listening. Uh, I thought that was cool. Oh, last two things. Uh, so, Vatic in Daystrom. Uh, she was supposed to be in Daystrom um, with Riker. <clears throat> Pardon. But she was like... Um, you, like, killed Starfleet people in Daystrom. Like, I know I, I'm not supposed to read too much into it, but, like, isn't there an alarm bell? Like, if there is, like, a murder of a Starfleet person in Daystrom, that you say something, just saying. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't think that she brought 
the Starfleet people back to the Shrike. I think that they were in Daystrom when they captured Will, which is where he was, and then she transported him there later. Like, I don't under, I don't understand. Um. Anyway, when she finally, like, uh, when Vatic finally brings Riker back to whatever, and Riker is just la- like again, Riker. <clears throat> um. He is laughing at them beating him up. Like, I love that he is just like, ha, you think 34 years of friendship? And she's like, oh, no. Here's what we have. Now, and then fucking Deanna. Come on, Deanna. Like, you're better than this. Like, I I was watching um, something online where they were like, maybe Deanna. Maybe that's, like, not really Deanna. Maybe that's, like, um... Maybe that's a changeling, changeling who meant to look like Deanna to throw off Will. Um, but, you know, they kind of set it up in the beginning of the episode where it was totally like, you know, find every friend of, uh, of Picard and whatever. So I'm, I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt that it is the real Deanna, but in the same token, it's like, fucking, come on, Deanna. Why you always end up in the damsel spot? Like, what? Come on. So it's just dumb. Um, anyway, that's my thought. Um, uh, before, I didn't write anything else down, but I had a thought when I was driving home the other day. So, um, you know, we are really digging into the kids of all of, you know, the TNG people. So, what I thought was like, are we doing a new show with all the TNG people? And I was like, hey, you know, we could also have Riker's daughter come up and help. Um, how old is she now? I don't know how fucking old she is, but like. Is she going to be in Starfleet Academy? Like, that would be cool if we did that kind of thing. Like, what are we doing here? Um, so I thought that was interesting. I'm interested to see what you thought of the episode. I really liked it. I like this one a lot. Like, um, I just thought it had so many moments that it was just hitting on all of the ways that it loves its fans. So I, I cannot wait for uh, next week, this week, whatever. Um as we keep going, because I'm going to do Dominion right after this. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see where it's going, because it's just fucking mm, so bad. All right, tell me what you think. Bye.